All right, today on the table I have the SCAR 17S and the DT10. Now, typically when I tell you guys price split, what I'm doing is I'm taking my cost minus my cost because I figure, you know, as a gun shop applies a markup, it's probably going to be the same markup on both items, so it should go down the board. This is an $1,800, you know, my cost minus my cost, but the fact is that this rifle costs so much more than that, if they were to apply both markups on both these rifles, that split would grow drastically. But basically, you're looking at four of these for the cost of one of these. Now, is that cost worth it? That's what I'm trying to answer in this video. What are the advantages of a SCAR over an entry-level 308 battle rifle? Well, let's start from the front. First thing, the SCAR comes with a hybrid, like, muzzle brake flash suppressor. For me, at least, a 308 battle rifle, I need a muzzle brake. Otherwise, the rifle is just not comfortable to shoot, and I fatigue out really 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 quick and it's just not enjoyable anymore the scar also comes with a piston operated gas system which for me at least it's a must on a 308 I've only had experience with one other 308 battle rifle and that's an armor light AR 10 a2 and that one soiled up really fast like 120 rounds it would get dirty enough to where it could start causing malfunctions not a lot of them but you know like Every once in a while, failure to feed, failure to extract, something along that lines. And this rifle runs insanely clean. The next thing the SCAR will come with is sights. Now this comes with a free-floated barrel, and it also comes with a pinned-in front sight. For me, for this style of rifle, or an AR-15, it's an absolute must to have the front sight pinned in, because I've had them shift and give me issues. This doesn't come with a muzzle brake. This comes with a flash suppressor, so this is something I would have to change out. I also don't like the handguard on this because it's too fat. I prefer the armor light ones where they start out fat in the back and then taper in. It's just more aesthetically pleasing to me. And this is direct impingement. Assuming this gets just as dirty as my armor light AR-10, it would need to be cleaned, you know, about 120 rounds. If I run a suppressor, about half that. The actual weight of the firearm, the SCAR is slightly lighter. Take in mind I have a stupid scale. This thing's only really good for showing me weight differences on anything over than 5 pounds, but it does show that this is a lighter firearm than this. But I don't know this one's exact weight because I couldn't find it on the internet, and I'm not trusting that scale. But the SCAR weighs 8 pounds flat with an empty magazine in it. Now the controls on the DTI... They're exactly the same as an AR-15. You could transition from an AR-15 and go to this and be right at home. Know exactly how it works. Your hands are all in the same spots. The only difference is the receiver is slightly longer and slightly fatter. And it's going to have, instead of going bang, it's going to go boom. Uh, your scar comes with your iron sights like I had said. On the back it's actually got a ranging reticle. So you can dial in your range. I like that a lot because I run iron sights. So these will never come off. Goes all the way up to 600 yards you can dial in for. Now you can go past that but that's all that's marked off. I have tested this out to 300 yards. Unfortunately that's the farthest range I've been able to find because where I used to shoot 500 yards I can no longer go there. So at 300 yards it's very accurate. And... This range is in properly. I don't know how it does pass that. These sights also flip down. You could run a scope on here, and because this is one solid rail, you'd have no problems putting night vision or something in front of the scope. Thermal, possibly, so that's really cool, too. It's also got an adjustable gas block, so you can flip it to the side if you're running a silencer. I did flip it to the side without a silencer, and it still cycles just fine. This one you don't have a rear sight, so you're going to have to buy one, or you're going to have to put a scope on this. So that's another cost that would go into purchasing this rifle. Now as far as the barrel goes, uh, it says this is a chrome molly varget steel or whatever, but it doesn't say like 4150, so I'm not sure on that, but it is a 110 twist. And this is another point where the scar really shines. This is a cold hammer forged chrome line steel barrel. And it is a 112 twist. So you are looking at a different twist rate. 110, 112. 
Uh, your stock. Both of them sit on your shoulder differently. Your scarf's more straight on. Your DTI's got a bit more of a curve to it. Like I said, if you're coming off an AR-15, this is probably what you're going to run. Or want to run because it'll be easiest to transition. Now the scars stock does fold up. Really great for storage. And because this is my hunting rifle, it works out really good too. Because if I'm dragging a deer, I can fold it up and just put it on my back. Now the scar, how this works, all right, so with like an AK, if something were to happen, I can actually hit on this charging handle and move the bolt forward. This has a forward assist. I usually never use these. I only had one incident where I had to use one on an AR-15 because it was insanely cold, and the grease I used gummed up, so I had to help it forward. But on an AR-10, when I got over 120 rounds, my uh, AR-10 didn't have this because it was the old style. So I had no choice but to rack out a round, but if I would have had this, I could have just helped it into the chamber. So that's pretty cool. But like, oops. This charging handle's free, so you can't help it forward, so you need your forward assist. Controls, the scars work really good. Like when I'm driving and stuff, I just have my thumb right on top of this. And then I have this slung in a single point sling. So when I see something, I come up and then I can go. Now when you're coming off of safety, you can just swipe your finger up like that. So you never actually have to break your hand position. Same with your mag release. Really doable from your index finger. Plus it's ambidextrous, so you can also hit it on this side. Uh, your bolt release is only on one side though. But it's still in a good spot when I come up with a mag. I'm not going to put this in because it's loaded. But I'd come up, and then as I come up, like that, and then I'm into my shooting position. This charging handle can be changed from side to side. I have to run it on this side because of how I hold my rifles. It would hit my thumb. Which makes charging it kind of weird. I go over the top, you know, you can do whatever you want. Also, because this is the same as an AR-15, but it's slightly longer, I can still hit all the controls just fine. Bolt release, same thing. I'd come up with a mag, hit the release. Mag release, doable for my index finger. Now, when I put it back on safety, I have to break my hand position because I can't quite get it to go up like that. So I just have to swipe it with my thumb. For me, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, trigger break is different. Uh, this one's a different animal. It's not a two-stage, but it feels a lot like it. Once you get to shoot it for a while, you can almost find right where the wall is. Oh, I went too far that time. But it's like right there. Then right after that point, it's going to break. This is basically your standard AR-15 trigger. You can kind of take up the slop, but it's difficult. And it creeps a little farther, a little farther, and then it breaks. My personal opinion, honestly, why I'm spending this much on this firearm, I wish it had a slightly better trigger in it. But this one's totally serviceable. I can use it. Again, like I keep saying, if you transition from an AR-15 to an AR-10, this one will feel totally at home. Disassembly, I really don't see an advantage with either one. They're both insanely easy. The scar, you just got this pin. Hit the back of the stock without pinching your finger like I just did. Or hit the back of the pistol grip, pull off your stock, and then it just comes apart. Very simple. Uh, both of them do have extendable stocks. The scar is slightly longer with the stock fully extended. And it's slightly longer with the stock all the way in. This does have a risable cheek rest, so it can go up. So if you're running a really tall scope, most of your scopes, though, you know, to actually buy something for this rifle, you're not going to go with like a 12 by, you know, whatever. You're probably going to go with like a 1x6, maybe a 3x9. Same with this, because those are kind of neuters what the platform's actually made for. 
And with those side scopes, you don't really need the raising cheek rest and it works just fine on this rifle. So, what would I pick? The SCAR or the DTI? I mean, obviously this is my personal hunting rifle, so I did pick the SCAR. But say I wanted to buy more than one, obviously this would be it. Or if I was going to gift it to someone, this would be it. If I was just getting into 308 battle rifles and I never owned one yet, this would also be my pick. Just kind of lets you get your feet wet. Because if you try to sell this, you're going to lose a lot of money. Because I mean, even like a 10% markup, you're going to be looking at, it's probably going to be $300 over cost. Then you're going to have tax, which in Wisconsin is 5.5%, so then... Another 150 on top of that. All that will be wasted because the only amount that anyone ever pays for this, because they pretty much, once they hit gun broker, they go down to original cost for used rifles. So you're looking to lose probably $600 if you decide you don't want this. This you probably would be able to break even. And sometimes they run these on sales for insanely cheap, $200 than they are right now. And it's got great sling points. This works really nice with a single point sling, hangs perfectly. This one, the magazines are also more available. Now you can get a different little receiver for the SCAR to run those style of magazines, but after the cost of the receiver just to break even, you gotta buy like 15 mags. These are about 40 bucks a piece. They're really high quality. It does have this on the bottom, so if you're using it as a rest, it'll sit nice and flat. But thanks for watching. Leave in the comments below which one you would pick and why. Don't forget to subscribe.